you, my brother Victor, and good night, uh, UNC family. Hi. Welcome, and thank you all for being here tonight. You know, as we've been doing this, and I'm looking at the tagline that we have there, stronger Trinidad and Tobago, a stronger UNC, sorry, for stronger Trinidad and Tobago. I want to try to connect in a few minutes that, that Victor has given me, and I must admit I will have difficulty, yeah, because I do seminars for a living, and I talk for a whole day. I give some, so to cut, talk for five minutes is just my introduction. But I just want briefly to connect what is happening in the country, the crisis that we face in Trinidad and Tobago. And you all know about it. We read about the unprecedented and apparently uncontrollable crime that has gripped our country. All of us know about it. We hear it on news, we read it on newspaper. We know that we're in a serious economic crisis. We want jobs for ourselves, for our children, better education, better health care. There are many problems. You know, some time ago, the saying used to be said, we are on a slippery slope, we are on a slippery slope. And I came to the conclusion that we slide off the slope a long time. We know in the ditch, we're in the gutter. We're in serious problems. And I have found that as we move around, people want to talk about these things all the time. And we could talk ad infinitum, but understand this. The only way we could make a difference is if we are in government. When we are in opposition, the other side is fighting to remain in opposition. We've been losing elections since 2015. We can't do anything. These, uh, the MPs who are here, MP Anita Haynes is here tonight. The MPs will tell you, um, Rodney Charles is here, how difficult it is in, in Parliament to get anything done. But in order to get into government where we could make a difference, where we could try to satisfy your needs for infrastructure and try to put our collective minds to working on the economy and solving the problem with Trinidad and Tobago, we have to win the election. We have to win an election that is coming up next. And in order to win an election, we have to have a strong party. We have to have an organized party. And part of the reason that we are offering ourselves and we are stronger UNC tonight, and we are exercising our democratic rights under the Constitution of the United National Congress. The Constitution gives us the right to offer ourselves to leadership every two years, and that is what this group is about. We are not dissidents, we are not enemies, we are not seeking to break up, we are seeking to build, we are seeking to improve upon. Let me tell you, the narrative has been spread around there that we abide with the Constitution. Well, let me tell you here tonight, most of the Constitution, probably 99% of the Constitution is not, I'm telling you as members of the UNC, if you read the Constitution, the party does not abide by the Constitution. They seem to believe, and I, I was wondering what, they seem to believe that by holding the elections, Within the time, within the two years that is due, we are abiding by the Constitution. But the Constitution is a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that. And a Constitution is very important. We have to understand. Right now, we see what has happened in the United States. This evening, I was seeing on one of the television stations uh, a discussion on the rule of law and the importance of the Constitution, rule of law. If we are breaking our own Constitution, ignoring it, violating it within the UNC, what will it do in the country? And this is coming from someone who is, the old people used to pronounce it, a liar, but a lawyer, an attorney, they call him today. A senior counsel that we, we have an attorney, attorney here tonight. They know how important the constitution is. A couple of years ago, when we had something of a constitutional crisis in the country, you know, Ramesh Lawrence Marat published the constitution, national constitution of Trinidad and Tobago in all the newspapers, and it was given out freely. A constitution is a sacred document. And therefore, we need to restore that constitution. We need to, I, I call it, operationalize the constitution. Put in, there are things in that constitution that have never been done. And these are by people who should know better. And they are ignoring the constitution. And coming to tell you that they abide by the constitution. The next, next untruth that is told, and I'm being kind to use the word untruth is that all the arms of the party are operating. Well, you all know that nothing operates in the party. And that is what we are seeking to improve. That is what we are trying to strengthen and to build up the UNC. The Constitution states that you, the party groups, are the basic institution of the party. 
you are the most important people. It was designed so that the party moved from the bottom up, the members of the party, up to Natex. It, it will seem that when you look at it that all the UNC is, is, is in Natex and the, the leadership who talks. But you are the strength of the party, as somebody said last night, I think it was Wayne, the, the foundation of a building. How much time going? <laughs> Five minutes gone. And the last thing you know, that has always been said is that the UNC is a democratic organization. And you know what used to come with that? You hear lie? That is lie. Because the way the UNC is run, nobody has a voice in it. If you destroy all the party groups, and let me tell you, the first four organs and units of the Constitution are all at the constituency level. Party groups, constituency executives, constituency councils, and constituency congress, I think it is. Four of the 11 organs and constitutions that comprise the UNC are at the constituency level. And we will seek to, uh, to, to restore that, to bring that back into progress. I am Curtis Manchin, and I am contesting the post of treasurer. And you have heard, as well, you would have heard MP Russian Parry said when he asked the former treasurer how much rent we paid for the building, the treasurer didn't know. What is the financial position of the party? The treasurer didn't know. What do you have a treasurer for? Well, thankfully, he has gone. And another one is contesting the position. But every organization, institution, from the smallest NGO to the largest conglomerate we see in, in government right now, has to prepare financial statements, has to have proper financial accountability. It is a standard of organization like once you have a group of people coming together, MP um, Rodney Charles mentioned the MPs donate a portion of their salaries every month and there's no accountability for it. What kind of party is this? That is what we are seeking to approve. But I think my time is gone. Victor has been kind to me. Thank you all being very much. Vote for the praying hands on June the 15th. Thank you.